Would you look at that? The wonder of physics, people. First off, we're just gonna make a scene here. It's gonna be a 3D scene, of course. We're gonna add a camera node so that we can actually see the things in our scene. And we're just gonna put it back uh, some ways over here is fine, wherever, it doesn't really matter. And if we select it and then we click preview, we can see what our camera sees. So we're just gonna save the scene. Um, let me just call it the main scene, that's fine. We're gonna give our scene a script. And this is where our code for our actual gravity is gonna be. Let's just get rid of this uh, random stuff. And we're gonna create a variable and that is going to be our gravity bodies. And we're gonna make that uh, an empty list or an array as it's called. So now we're gonna get rid of this and we're going to put in this block of code here. So for I in get children. So that's getting all of the children of this node and it's seeing if I, meaning each individual child is a rigid body, 3D, uh, then it'll add that node to the list of gravity bodies. And the gravity bodies are all the bodies that are gonna be gravitationally affecting each other in our scene. Okay, so now we're gonna create our gravity function. So here's what our gravity function is going to look like. Now there's a lot <laughs> going on here, and I'm not going to explain all of it, but basically uh, it creates a variable force and the force is going to be equal to, uh, well, basically it works exactly the same as gravity works in our universe, or I should say almost the same. Uh, this is based on Newton's law of universal gravitation, which should be close enough for whatever video game you're making, unless you're making a very, very interesting video game. These backslashes here, they just tell the engine that basically this is all one big line of code. So this is the same as this, essentially. Um, and just splitting it up like this makes it easier to read. But basically it's using the mass of body one and body two and multiplying that by the constant of gravity to figure out how much force should be applied to body one. And so body one is the body that is going to have gravity exerted on it and body two is the body that is attracting body one. Now, th don't worry, you can have more than two gravity bodies in this system. You can have an unlimited number of gravity bodies, all of which will attract each other but first off, I'm going to define the gravity constant. And you can set this to be whatever you want. In our universe, the gravitational constant is this number. Uh, it's a very, very small number, uh, which is why your planets are gonna need to be extremely massive uh, for them to gravitationally affect each other. So you may want to make it uh, somewhat larger. Let's make it uh, this number. Okay, so we have our gravity function and we have our list of gravity bodies. So now we just need to use the process function to iterate through each body and apply gravity to all of them. First off, I do wanna change this to a physics process instead. Uh, that'll just make it more run more consistently. So we're gonna delete this and we're going to put in our code here. So basically what this code does is it takes each body in gravity bodies and then iterates through every other body in the gravity bodies list and assuming that the two bodies are not the same it applies gravity to that body this here is actually a typo it should be apply central force not add central force so now we're going to go back to our scene and we're just going to add some rigid bodies so let's find it here we go now we can add a collision shape and a mesh as well so we can actually actually see it so we'll just make the collision shape a sphere and same for the mesh so I have a nice, nice little uh, sphere there we can duplicate it um, and we can put this one over here or yeah, just wherever Make another one, we can even change it to, say, a box. That might be fun. <laughs> I don't know, just do whatever you want. Let's look through our camera, make sure we can see everything. All right. And last thing we wanna do is we, we wanna go into our project settings and we want to go to the physics tab here, click on 3D, and you see this default gravity thing here. We wanna set that to zero. Now we should be all set, uh, although uh, I will say I've already tested this <laughs> and uh, we should make gravity 
higher or else it's not going to be very interesting to look at. All right, so now we can hit our run current scene button and look at them go. Wow, not uh, much to look at because the, uh, the vault environment is sort of uh, just this uh, gray nothingness. We can add a light if we want, make it a little bit easier to see stuff. Uh, we can add an Omni light, put it just wherever. Over here is fine. Uh, extends range. Sure. All right, let's see how that looks. There we go, and then we can sort of see them. And yeah, they, uh, they uh, have gravity. There you go. Simple as that. We can make gravity even higher if we want. Let's look at that. Ooh, let's add some more objects. Put that somewhere over here. All right, let's take a look at this. Whoa. Gravity, guys, wow, it's gravity. Another thing we can do, and I'm going to lower gravity real quick so that I can demonstrate this. We can change the mass of different objects. So for example, we can take this object here and we can change its mass. So we can give this an extremely high mass and it will have higher gravity. So let's see what happens. Yeah, make it a little bit lower maybe, let's see. Oh, I have an idea. Let's, um, let's move this one Let's move this one to be at uh, zero here. Okay. Now let's move the camera back some more. Okay. Now let's take let's take this one, move it a little bit up. Let's give it a similar mass. Um, yeah, let's give it the same mass, hundred. Same as this one, and now. Let's give it some velocity. So this is the x-axis. We're going to give it, um, let's say, negative 10 on the x-axis. So now what we can do is we can give it some linear velocity. So you can see this red line here is the x-axis. So we're going to move it this way. So that's negative on the x-axis. Let's give it like negative 10. And then for this one, let's give it a uh, positive 10. And let's see what happens. Okay, I think that's a little bit too much velocity, so I set them to 5 and minus 5. And let's see what happens. Whoa! They almost orbit each other, but the other stuff <laughs> is sort of in the way. But you can see, we have, we have orbits. The other objects are orbiting this pair here. Well, sort of. It's a little bit chaotic. You know what, let's just, let's just get rid of all these. So we can have a pure a simulation here. Look at that. Okay, but they eventually smash into each other. So, okay, so I think I figured out what the issue is. If we go into project settings and then go down to physics 3D, and we go to advanced settings, we should find, yep, yeah, default linear damp. Let's set this to zero. And now, we should have the desired effect. Two perfectly orbiting bodies, except they still smash into each other eventually. Maybe if we set angular damp to zero as well? That seemed to do it. So now these two bodies will orbit each other uh, until the end of time. We can make one of them physically larger, uh, although you'll see if we edit this, it edits both of them because they have the same material. So we just click Make Unique, and now we can make this larger. Uh, they have the same material because it was a duplicate. Um, so we can, oh yeah, do the same for this one. Make Unique. Make that larger. So we can give this, yeah, I gave this a mass of 100, that's fine. Give this a mass of 10, okay. Let's make this, let's move this far, farther away. Uh, can we still see it? Not quite. Let me move that farther back. Okay. And now we're going to give this no velocity. 
and give this minus five, maybe like minus three. Okay, now let's see what happens. Oh, uh, almost, we almost have a planet. I think it was, I think it was good at minus five, like it was. All right, now let's run it, see what happens. Oh, we have a planet. That's right. And of course, the planet does still have mass, so it does still exert some gravity on the planet here. And that's why it's, the whole system is moving together. Oh, you know what we should do? We should make this the sun. <laughs> so we can make this light the child of that node. Move it to zero. And I'm not sure, uh, will that, will that, will that work properly? It will. Of course, uh, this just looks like darkness, so let's fix that. Uh, you know what, we can make that, we can make that problem go away if we just add a, a material here. And we're going to make it unshaded. So right here, the shading mode, just make it unshaded. And I'll just appear like it's completely white. Um, let's make this, let's give this a material um, on its mesh. And we can make it green. We can also create a new environment. So let's see, new environment. There should be no ambient light at all. Oh, and we also have to set this to zero. All right, there we go. And now let's hit play. Wow. Look at that. If we want, we can make the camera a child of this body here, the sun, we can name it. And so that way it'll always be looking from the sun's perspective and it'll just always stay in the middle of the frame. Let's move the camera a little bit farther away so that we can give the planet uh, quite a bit more room. There's something called a hill sphere. The hill sphere is basically the uh, the area where a, a gravitational object is dominant. So, like for example, Earth has a hill sphere, and the Moon is within Earth's hill sphere. And if it was outside the hill sphere, then it would stop orbiting Earth. It would start orbiting the Sun or another planet. And it would just go somewhere else. Um, the hill sphere is where any given object's gravity is dominant. So if we're gonna if we're gonna give this planet a moon, we have to give it very we have to keep it uh, very close to this planet. If it's too far away, then it will be within the sun's hill sphere and it'll stop orbiting this planet. So let's duplicate this. Um, let's move it down here. Let's make this unique. We're gonna make it half its radius. Make this unique as well. And give it half its radius as well. And make this material unique. And then we're going to, uh, yeah, just make it white, that's fine. So now we can see here we have our planet and the planet's moon. Now the planet has a velocity of minus five. We're gonna give the moon a velocity of minus five as well. Um, and it actually already does because it's a duplicate, but we're gonna make it just a little bit less, minus four, let's say, and let's see what happens. Okay, so first off, the planet has too much velocity. It just flew away from the sun and the moon did not have enough velocity to continue orbiting its planet. Okay, so I gave the planet minus three uh, velocity and I gave the moon zero. And now, look at this. Would you look at that? The wonder of physics, people. So that's all I have for you today. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, if you found this tutorial useful, uh, then why don't you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. It really helps out the channel. And I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.